you know, part of the uh, discussion that has centered on uh, the last, the, the horrors of last weekend has been an attempt on some on our side to have a reasonable and rational deba- discussion. Not a debate. What's the debate? It's a discussion about how we address the piss-poor job that this country does in responding to mental health crises. Our, uh, our, uh, uh, our college freshman, uh, Cassie, Cassie at college, um, you, we've heard from her this week, with some honest questions about um, mental health and firearms and the sort of um, dynamic, if you will, between the two. Uh, she uh, sent me a note. She has a blog post up. Uh, her blog is Cassie at college.com, C-A-S-S-I-E at college.com. And she, uh, she wrote asking for some, uh, for some editorial help, and I couldn't get to it in time enough today. And she wrote back and said, I have no patience at all, and hit publish. But she makes some statements and asks some questions. And these are they. We need gun control in the U.S. We need better mental health care in the U.S. We need better health care in the U.S. We need to start preventing mass shootings instead of just crying when they occur. But before we can prevent anything, we have to be able to ask the right questions. Question one. Would you rather live next to a mentally ill person with a gun or a mentally ill person with an appointment at the community mental health clinic? Two. Think about the craziest person in your family. Quotes around craziest. We're not trying to be insensitive here. Think about the craziest person in your family. Do you want them in your house overnight with a gun in their hands? Three, think about the stupidest person in your family. Do you want them in your house overnight with a gun in their hands? Four, is there anyone in your family who has ever become senile? Do you want them in your house overnight with a gun in their hands? Now, a new set of questions. One, how much money could we save by paying for mental health care instead of building more and more prisons? Two, when is the right time to ask these questions? And I think the most trenchant question of all is that last one. When is the right time to ask these questions. Because if you ask them immediately after another one of these seemingly endless horrors, remember, we are not calling this a tragedy. If you ask it in the immediate aftermath of one of these horrors, uh, some idiot from the National Rifle Republican Association will say, you're just trying to capitalize on this tragedy in order to advance your anti-gun agenda. When in fact what we're actually talking about is a pro-septuagenarian granny agenda and a pro-nine-year-old getting to be a ten-year-old agenda. But that's not how they frame it, because we don't get to frame things. Remember, we don't get to frame things the right wing does. So it's obvious that we can't, the the right time to ask these questions is not in the immediate aftermath of a horror like the Tucson terrorist attack. So we've eliminated that. There's no way of knowing when the next one is going to happen, so we can't ask it immediately before it because we don't know when it's going to happen, so that one's ruled out. And any other time that you might ask these questions, as Cassie notes, Any other time you might ask these questions are also going to be the wrong time because there's nothing wrong with law-abiding Americans having them some shooting iron guns. 
and about 100,000 rounds of ammunition each. Because one of these days we're going to have to take our country back. Looky here. Here it is now. We've got to take our country back. And we've got to... And we got, we got to, we, we can't retreat. We got to reload like, like Miss Sarah Dunn said. So think about the questions Cassie asked in those terms and understand. Think about it in terms of what I just said. That we are never allowed to ask these questions because we are not allowed to frame the issues 